it's gonna knock this dude out. It's gonna fight this guy, right? And you got, and you're so drunk, you're you're wobbling. You're like <gasps> teetering. Oh, okay, then and I'm then blacked out. You're blacked out. You threw a shit. full on swing at this fool, right? He didn't move. You missed him, <laughs> and then you spun around and you fell on the floor. <laughs> and the guy was like. Oh, <laughs> you didn't do anything, but you were so drunk, and because I wasn't there with you, you were there earlier. Either it was with like some Seattle friends, or you were with somebody else. Oh shit! And I remember seeing you, and then dude. in five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Genius uh, Brain. <laughs> God damn it! God damn it! <laughs> Genius Brain, Brain podcast. podcast. We've been drinking, man. Is Pandemic it? has caused me to drink a lot more than I normally do, but I don't drink like how I used to, though. I sip now. Yeah. And it's the only time I drink is when I come here. I, the only time I drink is when I podcast. Yeah. That's really oh, that's Specifically. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> drinking by yourself is fucking sad. Yeah. <laughs> you got, it's, yeah. it's pretty sad, dude. <laughs> don't remind me of those days. <laughs> do you used to drink a lot by yourself? Sometimes, man. I just go. This is what I do. I get a fucking big ass, like, Costco jug of Crown. And just drink it. By, by yourself? Myself. Yeah, in Seattle. And like one time, okay, Dan will even attest. Uh -huh. He borrowed my car once. And then he came back and he found this bottle of North Korean soju <laughs> that my sister got me from North Korea. I don't like remember shit. why it was still in there. And then um, an empty bottle of Crown too. He is like, dude, I think you have a problem. <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, do you remember when a bunch of people came over to the apartment for a party? Yeah. And then somebody smoked your North Korean cigarettes. Yeah. I'm like, damn, man. Like, come on. <laughs> like, it's like they didn't, they were just in your room and they just started smoking cigarettes out your fucking window. Yeah. And clearly these aren't normal cigarettes. Yeah. They're, they're North Korean cigarettes. They look like shit. And they're pretty shitty too. They taste like shit too. Yeah. And but it was like that's specifically why I know how much was in there. Yeah. Because they taste like shit, so I didn't smoke them after, mm -hmm. but I kept them as souvenirs. Because my sister fucking went to North Korea to get them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I couldn't believe just like, man, you know what? Maybe we should have less parties. Yeah. <laughs> like, holy but shit! But I didn't so understand sick. why they just went to your fucking room. I think it was one of the few smoking areas because there was that fire escape out there. Oh, yeah, People yeah, yeah. love smoking there because the view. Yeah, I yeah, at yeah, least yeah. had that view out that window. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. ninth floor view in Cape Town was pretty dope. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was fucking weird that day. What, what, what party was that for? Dude, we had so many parties, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> you know what's it's funny? funny. We, we, were, we were just talking about this weird situation where, um, so there was a show called Cape Town Cowboys. I think it was Cape Town no, Cowboys. Cape Town. Just it was just called K-Town, yeah. right? It wasn't K-Town Cowboys, right? It was called K-Town. And um, there's a couple of cast members. I, I don't, I don't, I never watched that show, yeah. right? I didn't know, but I, I think my buddy, our buddy, Eddie, he was the one that executive producer right, or whatever, right. right? Never trashed that show in front of him out of respect for him. Mm. But that show was trash. <laughs> Eddie, you're a good man. I fucking love you. But if that was your crown jewel of a moment in your life, you need to redo your life <laughs> because that shit was fucking weird. So I did the audition tape for one of the cast members, because he's my young from Seattle. <laughs> oh! And Eddie hit me. That's how I first met him. I was in. I was at Dan's house, and I get a phone call. He's like, "Yo, uh, Joe Cha or shit, man." That's fine. He's on the show. He's on the show. Yeah. He gave me your number, and it was like, "Da da da." Do you want to work on the show? Do you want to be, you know, one of the filmers, directors, editors on the show? Do you want to help us produce this? And I was like. Nah, you yeah. know, like, cause just making the audition tape to make it so Jersey Shorey for mm -hmm. Asians, I did, I knocked it out of the park, but like, I was like, but I don't want to make like 10 episodes yeah. of this shit, you know? That's essentially what the show was. It was, yeah. the, it was the Jersey Shore, the Koreatown version of it, right? Yeah. And the idea was, was like, well, who wants to see more Asians play violin or do yeah. well, excel in these things we know? We're, the idea was just be trashy and be okay with being trashy. Yeah. You know, like, the idea was, and this is that's the thing that every cast member, like, because I, I met a bunch of them because through making this audition tape, they all know what it is exactly, but they want, they're being a part of it, be like, ultimately, we're not in a box of this minority myth. Yeah. Ultimately. This was 10 years ago. Yeah. They were saying, we get fucked up and we do stupid shit too. I think the <laughs> weird thing about that show was that it was like, are these fools even from fucking K-Town? <laughs> 
I think maybe a couple of them. A couple of them yeah. were. I'm like, they're not even fucking no. from K-Town. You have any... There's way better trash bags in yeah. K-Town. <laughs> yeah. All right? And you guys aren't even you, real trash bags. We all know Dumb could have been on that show. Yeah, <laughs> Dumb could have been on that show easy, yeah. dude. But, you know, he would never be on that show, though. No. You know what I mean? But... <laughs> So one of the one of the guys, I think he was a cast member, but this dude, I fucking hated this dude so much. Um, so during, so we had a bunch of movie posters that you guys got, yeah. right? And you guys got it from when blockbusters were shut down. down yeah, right? so we bought all these fucking movie posters. Yeah, so these are like legit movie posters. You can't really buy these anywhere. Mm -mm, they're printed on the fucking canvas, mm -hmm. like, and it's not like a regular canvas. It's like this wooden canvas. Yeah, it's like painted. Yeah, it's vintage. It's yeah. it's really fucking dope, right? And Lo and behold, there was uh, one of the Batman posters were missing. Yeah. And so what happened was I just happened to be drunk at that party and just because we this party specifically was the moving party. Mm. We were like, we were like, hey, we just moved to K-Town and like fucking shit ton of people showed up. I remember this at least. I'm drunk and I'm looking at the posters like, wow, it's nice to be here. And I'm like. Where's that fucking Batman poster? <laughs> like that poster is legit. Mm -hmm. Like it was like, what the fuck? And one of the cast members, I see him and his friend walking out the door, carrying the fucking poster in his. This is a twenty-seven by thirty-four poster. It's huge. It's huge, man. Where you think you're it's going? It's fucking huge. I literally caught him out the door and snatched it out of his hand. I was like, bro, where are you going with this? Yeah. He's like, ah, man, it was a joke. No, it was not. You out the door, man. Yeah. You're out the door. And I just went back in and shut the door. Yeah, so this fool like, tells wow. me that shit, and I'm getting fucking mad, <laughs> right? I'm getting infuriated, right? Because you don't steal shit from people. Come on, at right? our housewarming at party? A, at our housewarming party. This fool's trying to steal some of our shit, right? And you guys already know, if you guys didn't grow up in a nice area, you steal from somebody's shit, some shit's going to pop off, right? Oh, yeah. I'm not saying I'm a thug or anything else, but I was livid, right? And I'm like, this bitch thinks that he could fucking push us over because we're some fucking nice guys. Yeah. So I saw that dude at Tobang, <laughs> and, and I went up to him. I was like, hey, are you the dude that tried to fucking jack my shit? Right? It wasn't even my, it was his poster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But it's our house. It's our house. Yeah. I was like, you trying to jack my shit? I was like, what's up, bro? You know, and I literally was in this dude's face. Abe was there and everything. He's like, oh, fuck it. Dave's going to get into a fight in this bar. Yeah. This guy, I shit you fucking not out of nowhere. Starts crying. <laughs> he starts crying. <laughs> starts bawling his eyes out. And oh now it's God. just awkward. Right? Uh -huh. And he's like, yo, man, like we're homies. I, you know, he's like, I just want us to be friends. I'm like, oh, he, this guy's on coke. Like he has uh -huh. to be coked. <laughs> like, this dude is coked the fuck out. He's bawling in front of me, crying wow. in this bar. <laughs> like, yo, man, I don't want me homies. I'm trying to be friends. We friends, right? And I'm like. I'm not your friend is what I said. Dude. I was like, I don't even fucking know you, dude. I was like, bro, don't ever step into my place. And I just kind of left it at that. But this guy was crying in front of me. So either he was coming down from a high, but he was definitely on drugs. <laughs> and that's the type of human beings we will let in our apartment. Yeah. <laughs> Such a weird fucking day. Those, I hated that guy. Those those days at the apartment, we have so many weird stories. People coming in and out. Yeah, Even inviting one person. Okay, remember when I invited one girl over... And she showed up with six random dudes. Oh my God. Do you remember that? And you were laying on the couch watching TV and they showed up and I'm like, I was talking to her like, who the fuck are these people? <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? I, do you want to hang out? You and me. Mm -hmm. Who are these people? Because she had come up before she saw we had a big place. Yeah. And people, the wrong thing, was like, because it happened to a lot of people. People thought our joint was the fucking headquarters of K-Town. Yeah. Like, come hang out here. Yeah. And they just show up. I remember you were laying down. And this fucking kid took a seat to watch TV, but your feet were at the end of the yeah. couch too. And I was like, David is not going to move. Yep. David is not going to move. I was literally and, yeah, staring at him. You're just staring at him like, you weren't even watching TV anymore. I, I just kept staring at him. And I was, I, I pulled her. I was like, who are these people? Why are they here? This is our apartment. We live here. We live and sleep. Yeah. She was like, oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, I, was, I was like, you didn't know you're sorry? Oh I remember, and I just kept staring at this dude, and he was feeling super uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. I was like, I'm going to fuck this guy up. That's all I kept thinking about. <laughs> he just like, kind of got what him. Did they, uh, what did they think this yeah. place was? People live here. <laughs> I was literally going to fuck that guy up, and I just kept staring at him. I think he was expecting me to say hi to him. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. So another story was like, because people kept thinking it was like the headquarters, everyone hangs out there. Mm -hmm. Um. 
very few people knew that you can actually, because this building's fucking old, like built in the mm-hmm. 1920s, you can just lift the fire escape window and get into my room yeah. if the door's locked. Very few people knew that info. This girl, she came around this and then, and one of our roommates was getting busy. <laughs> oh my God. And they were being loud. But she came in anyway, and she just chilled in that dining room, like office table we had where we all did our work. She just sat there and waited till she I came think out. I know who this is. Yeah. I know who this is. You know, I, I've actually kicked that girl out a couple of times. I right. got so fucking pissed. Because our place was, okay, it was a 4,000 square foot apartment. It was, yeah, it was huge, huge yeah. right? And I, sometimes people would come in. I had no idea who the fuck it was. <laughs> and I would wake up. And one time I saw that girl. She came. I was like, how did you get it? I was like, who let you in? Who are you kicking it with? It's like, oh, I'm just in town. I'm just kicking it. I'm like, get the fuck yeah. out. How did you get in, right? She was getting in through my fucking window. There are times I come into my room and my bed has a footprint on it. <laughs> I'm like, this fucking bitch. You're going to yep. sneak in. Take your fucking shoes off. You know, you know what the funny thing was? Like when when I saw her and this is what she said to me. She goes, oh, it's like, well, you know, Khalif crashed. I was like, yeah, because I let him. Yeah, we invited him. He comes through the front door. door. <laughs> exactly. He doesn't sneak in. He calls me to see when he's going to come in. And I let him crash her because it's full sleeping in his fucking car overnight. Yeah. And so I let him crash on the couch on the days that he has acting classes and auditions. You don't just to fucking break into my house and then suddenly expect me to be like, Welcome. Uh, hey, <laughs> hey, you're here. It's yeah. like, you know, we do that on Friday nights. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, this is a weekday. Yeah. You know, we're, we're chill. Like we're working. We're chill. What the fuck are you doing here, man? Yeah. I mean, we kind of created this really like fun environment where everybody was allowed to come in. And dude, there was sometimes, dude, we had uh, this one roommate where <laughs> I saw this dude. He, he used to hook up with a lot of girls. Yeah. But. <laughs> going through a very dark time and because he used to go out with this girl for a very long time the relationship went bad and i'm gonna tell this story one day i'm gonna have him on this podcast and he's <laughs> gonna hate that i'm gonna bring this up but that's why i'm not gonna say his name which i never do but <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something so this is when i first moved to k-town right and uh we were at this this uh club or bar or whatever and our mutual friend was there with his girl or whatever, whatnot, right? Yeah. And then he just recently got dumped by his long-term uh, relationship. I think they were actually even engaged yeah. at this point. And they were together. She's actually a, a church friend of mine that he was engaged to. Right. So I've known her for a very long time. She's a very sweet girl. Uh, so <laughs> we're at we're outside. We're at this place, right? It's a lounge slash club. We're drinking up. It's getting smashed or whatever, right? This dude is so fucking drunk at the table. He starts... He gets his alcoholic drink, whatever it is. It was like a shot of like, I don't know, some kind of clear clear alcohol. Just throws it in my face. What? <laughs> he goes, throws it in my face. And I'm sitting there and I'm getting mad. And remember, yeah. I used to have a very short temper. And so I looked at him. I was like, you throw that fucking drink in my face one more time. I'm going to drag you outside and beat your fucking ass. Is what I literally said to him. And he's drunk. And I see him smiling, just filling it up. He's when he's drunk too, remember he used to have that glazed look yeah. in his eyes where it was just like, like the a lights s- are on, nobody's home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> lights are on, no one's home. So right? he has the <laughs> eyes are like looking this way. You know exactly yeah. what I'm talking I've about. Seen it. So he had that. He's smiling, right? And he yeah. pours another drink. He's about to toss it in my face. I fucking grab his hand and I'm like, I just told you I'm gonna beat your fucking ass. Oh my god! And then I literally took the drink. Down. I was like, hold on. I grab him by his shirt. I drag him outside and I shove him against the wall. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck is your problem? He looks at me. He goes, she broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> and he starts crying. He goes, she broke my heart. <laughs> Dude. But you know why I'm not surprised? <laughs> yeah. You know why I'm not surprised? So we talked uh, this about this on the My Sassy Girl podcast. Uh-huh. My Sassy Girl, right? Uh-huh. The girl who fucking punched me in the face and mm-hmm. shit. You met her. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did not like her. Yeah. <laughs> she came over and we were already out and we, we came back to the apartment and you were just chilling. And we were at the kitchen window having a smoke and, we're, and you walked in, get to the fridge. And she goes, hey, hey, you're the comedian, right? You're funny. And you're like, ah, yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah. She goes, tell me a joke. Say something funny. <laughs> And then my fucking face. <laughs> and then you're like, uh, and she goes, hold on, hold on. I have a joke. I have a joke. Why did the 
Kopi and the Dracula. No way, way. <laughs> She was trying to tell that Congress she was trying to tell, And I remember what I said to her, too. I was like, what do you do for a living? And she was like, I'm a teacher. I was like, why don't you shut the fuck up and teach me something? Yeah. <laughs> and and you were like, like, okay. And then you grabbed her away. I was so I was fucking... Because like, I don't know who she was. Yeah. She was coming at me. And I'm like... So... This podcast is brought to you by Fiverr. If you are looking for a network of on-demand freelance talent, look no further. Whether you're launching your first business, scaling your current business, or in need of extra support from graphic design, copywriting, marketing, film editing, everything you need under the sun, you name it, you can find the best help you need on Fiverr. Listen, I have used Fiverr uh, whenever I needed a quick logo, a graphic done, and Fiverr always had my back. It's super easy to contact freelance work and get precise deadlines from reliable help because you don't need to stress out whether you're going to get something or not. You don't need to do everything yourself. That's stupid. Stop wasting your time trying to fill every role when you can hire freelancers who can get it done for you while you focus on the stuff you need to get done. So check out fiverr.com and receive 10% off your first order by using my code GeniusBrain. Find all the digital services you need in one place at fiverr.com code GeniusBrain. Again, that's fiverr.com code GeniusBrain. After that, I had that whole incident <laughs> in Washington where she punched me in the face. Yeah, and I came back here, and you didn't you didn't know what happened, but I was chilling in the car, and you were like, "Yo, what's up? Are yeah, you, you've been like down or whatever." And I was like, "Yo, this girl, this and that, and and whatever." And before I could even get to the part where she punched me in the face, you were like, "Yo, fuck that bitch." <laughs> Be like, stop being a bitch. Get over that shit. It's fucking bullshit. Because I hate her. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have David for advice. Like, <laughs> and I was right, though. I just, yeah. I just, no, you were right, though. I, I had to fucking let I, that shit go. I just had no tact back yeah. in the day. Literally, back, yo, the David that you know now that could talk through his thoughts, it took time to get to this point. Yeah. Like, I was... I had, I had zero tact. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, I know how to fix this, but you know it too. <laughs> you didn't even need to know that she fucking punched me in the face, lied about like a fucking abortion and all this shit. You're just like, fuck that bitch and get the fuck out of here. I met her <laughs> once. And I'm yeah. like, I don't fucking like this girl. <laughs> That's so oh fucking funny, gosh. dude. So, you know, fucking it. Oh, I almost said no. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, this fool, right? So, afterward. <laughs> Afterwards, he's, you know, she broke my heart and starts crying against this wall. This will literally lean against the brick wall and start sliding down it <laughs> like a slug. <laughs> just and so me and our buddies, we we go eat to that at the, the Denny's in K-Town. Yeah. Afterwards, trying to sober him up. This fool is so drunk. I shit you not. He's drinking, but he doesn't know his mouth is still open. And so as his water's going, it is coming out. <laughs> it's coming out onto his shirt. Oh, my God. Just smashed out of his mind. She hurt me. This is no gad reflex at this point. He's just like, I'm doing what I can. Exactly. It's just the saddest human being ever, dude. Sometimes, too, I kind of miss being single because of these situations, like these funny ass things that would happen. <laughs> it was, it's so ridiculous. I can't make it up. But to be young in K Town, though. Yeah. <laughs> if we were still, if I was still in K Town now, there would be so many more stories. But now I'm just, I'm kind of scared to go out late at night. You know what though? So I live in K-Town now, right? Mm -hmm. And I moved there specifically because of a lot of deep-seated things like about how I never wanted to leave K-Town after the riots, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel a lot of fulfillment living there now, right? And paying my rent and like being where I was born. But God damn it, as the weeks go by, I'm like, this place is fucking junk. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, I love it because the culture and my family and all that. But like the horn honking, the traffic, the fucking. Okay, so one night I'm a little insomniatic. So it's like 2 a.m. I'm chilling, like uh, watching car model videos on YouTube. And I hear. <laughs> and the honk, the, the horn just going off. Yeah. Not stopping. And. You're like, oh, fuck, that was a big accident, right? But I'm sitting there, and the horn is still going off. Huh? When you see movies, what does that mean? That means that shit's fucked up. Like yeah. a dead body, a yeah. head on the horn or some shit, yeah. right? So I'm like, I got to see this. I put my jacket on and yeah. I go outside. I got to see this shit. And 
there's like this wrecked Camry, right? And all four doors are open, no passengers. All the airbags are off and the front is ripped off, right? And the horn is just going off. I think the front just got smashed really bad. And some guy walked up, opened the hood and just unplugged the battery, turn off the horn. I'm like, what the fuck? What happened here? And he goes, go check out just down the street. Three more cars just smashed in. So <gasps> one of the wheels just under the engine, you know? Like this car just sideswiped three cars and then like fucking stopped. And whoever's in there jumped out, right? This is outside of my fucking apartment. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And I'm like, holy fucking shit, right? And now there's crowds of people from all the neighborhood coming out, seeing it, right? And there was another party at someone's apartment going on, right? And these drunk dudes came out and they're like, I saw them. I saw them. They were like teenagers, right? And then there's a couple teenagers there, right? There they go. And then they fucking book it. Two of them, two dudes. Boom, down the street. And these drunk dudes chase them. What the, the fuck? Ba, 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 hey, hey, you can't retell these drunk justice dudes. Just That's hilarious. Chasing after these guys running away, right? And I'm checking out like, holy shit. And then I see this bottle, this giant fucking bottle, like this big, right? Like a, like a CO2 oxygen tank, like when you go scuba diving, mm -hmm. right? Now, what the fuck is this? And one of the drunk guys come back. He's like, man, they're gone. I couldn't catch them, right? But them two bitches, these other two girls, they're in the car too. You can't run. Don't fucking run. And they're like, uh, they're like, well, no, we weren't. And then he's like, this drunk guy is just like Captain of Koreatown. <laughs> he's like, I saw you. I saw you. Like, you guys jumped out of the car, you guys grabbed the NAS bottle, and you ran down the street. The NAS bottle was too heavy, so you dropped it, and they ran. Wow, his and you memory guys are too really fast, good. Right? And he's like, I saw you, I saw you. Yeah, his memory was, like, he saw the whole thing. <laughs> right? What drunk. the fuck? And he started lecturing these girls. He was like, look, you guys are getting high off nitrous and driving your car? That's fucked up. He goes, I'm drunk and high right now. <laughs> But I was at my house. <laughs> I've seen this. I'm like, I don't know if I love K Town or if I need to get out of here. <laughs> if you live in K Town, you just have the best stories, dude. dude. Because all this crazy shit would happen. It happens. It just happens. It's so. You know what's the funny thing is like this fool has photographic memory about the accident. But I bet you, if you, where do you live? I have no clue. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, have no, I have no idea where I am. But I saw everything, dude. It was wild, dude. All the all those like late night. Night karaoke nights were super fucking fun. Oh, Dude, yeah. Dog, you know, I had a random fucking memory. Do you remember? I'm not sure if you remember this because you were stupid drunk, but I think <laughs> it was in Chapman Plaza. Okay. And then you got into an altercation with somebody, but you were so fucking drunk. I remember you swung at this guy and you completely missed. <gasps> and you did a full 360 spin and you fell on your ass. Do you Are remember you kidding this? me? You, no. Dog, I, it was like in front of Boba. I don't remember this shit. You're so fucking drunk. This was me? This is you. But I don't know what the altercation was, but you're usually not the person provoking somebody. Mm -hmm. But this guy was being an asshole or something. But I remember because you were squaring up on this dude. <laughs> and, I just... and I was like, oh, it's going to knock this dude out. It's going to fight this guy, right? And, you got, and you're so drunk, you're... You're wobbling. You're like teetering. <laughs> okay, then, then I'm blacked out. You're blacked out. You threw a shit. full on swing at this fool, right? He didn't move. You missed him. <laughs> and then you spun around and you fell on the floor. <laughs> and the guy was like, come on. <laughs> he couldn't do anything. <laughs> but you were so drunk. And because I wasn't there with you, you were there earlier. Either it was with like some Seattle friends or you were with somebody else. Oh, shit. And I just remember seeing you. And then there's some other your friends were helping you up. And I was just like, I'm just going to pretend I didn't see this. Yeah. Because <laughs> if I go, I, when I see I don't know nothing about this, <laughs> dude. What a Tobak, dude. Wow. But like you swung at this, dude, and you completely <laughs> missed. And then your friends were helping you up, and I'm like, I'm just going to save face for Ed and not say anything. <laughs> Can I tell you, that's not the first time that happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so at Tiggs, right? <laughs> God damn it, Ed. Me, Dan, and my brother at Tiggs. And, okay, so there's just this homeless lady. Like, it's known. This lady's always around um, Pioneer Square and, and Tiggs. She's begging for money. 
mm-hmm. whatever. And we see her so much, it's almost like being a regular customer. I don't know. Yeah. You just give her money and she'll go away kind of thing. And nobody, she, it's just like, it is what it is. And one day I hear, well, yeah, we're at Tiggs and this lady screaming, the same lady we know. Help! Somebody help! Mm-hmm. And then I saw it was that homeless lady. I'm like, what the fuck? Who's fucking with her? And this, this like dude just like walking up at her and like getting pissed. And I was like, Dan, we gotta go fuck this guy up. And then he goes, all right. <laughs> and I just ran by myself, but they just stayed <laughs> and watched me. <laughs> Fucking dead, right? And here's the thing, I'm blacked out because my brother and yeah. dad told me this story. <laughs> And they said, I walked up and I was like, hey, man, leave her alone. <laughs> right? And Dan was like, at least he's being honorable. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then uh, he was saying some shit. I, I honestly don't remember. No. But then I was like, leave her alone, leave her alone. And then he shoved me. And I was like, oh, this is it. And so I grabbed him by the collar and I threw a punch to sh- like bring him in mm-hmm. and bring my fist to his face. I missed <laughs> completely missed <laughs> and his chin like hit my wrist like it scraped my wrist and he was like all right all right man and then he left and then <laughs> my brother was standing there like oh my god <laughs> like shaking his, his head so embarrassing yeah, so embarrassed. <laughs> hey. and, uh, and dan was like what the fuck are you like yeah i guess you won <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. man. I don't know. I don't know what's worse than that, or the, watching you just in a distance. I was over at the 7 Eleven just <laughs> watching you, dude. Just fuck, like, not the 7 Eleven, the fucking, uh, I wasn't at the 7 Eleven, but you could see right in front of where yeah, Tobago right. is. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck, man? I just I was like, house? What the fuck is going on, dude? I'm pretty sure there was a time when I was looking for trouble. Yeah. Like, just like, fuck it, dude. Fuck it. I don't People know. would, I mean, it was pretty easy to get in fight in K Town though. Like there was always somebody starting shit, saying shit. So I always just kind of kept to myself, dude. Even like when I was way past that shit, too, and looking at how dumb I was, you know. Um, then I, now I'm older, and I'm still going to Chapman to have dinner with my family. Mm-hmm. This is before my sister moved to LA, and she's wearing a Seahawks jersey, um, the twelve. You know how they're the twelfth man, and so. Seahawks fans were 12. Yeah. Well, that was the year the Seahawks played the Patriots. We know what happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this, we're just walking through Chapman, this random fucking K-Town boy. He was a boy because he had pimples. was like, fuck Brady. Fuck Brady. At my sister. Chick-fil-A right? guy all over again, dude. Right. Yo, fuck Brady. And I'm like, she's wearing a Seahawks shirt because Tom Brady wears number 12. Oh, my God. And I was like, she's wearing a Seahawks jersey, dude. What's your problem? And then he was like, oh, oh, you? You want some of this? Huh? Oh, you're talking shit? This guy was looking for a fight. A fight. Yeah. Because I was like, bro, like. It's a fucking Seahawks jersey, dummy. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you run into that all the time. I mean, thank God for the pandemic. So we don't have like bullshit OC boys and Valley boys coming on the weekends and shit. I start. I, I, I met with Paul in Hawaii and yeah. then we were going over old stories too, like K Town stories, and he brought up the whole Chipotle fight thing, right? Was that <laughs> in front of like near where he used to live? And then there was like little things that I completely forgot that I did that he was telling me about that. But he was he was telling from his perspective, which I which I only knew when I told him <clears throat> on this podcast where I was outside the Chipotle and this guy was just, you know, mouthing off. And I got so fucking mad. Like when I get really angry, I just I start laughing for some reason. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of menacing. Yeah, it's kind of because like, I'm like, are you crazy? Because the only thing is like, oh, I'm going to fucking murder this person, yeah. right? And so we were outside of Chipotle and I had my hand on his shoulder. I was smiling and laughing. And so Paul thought we were friends, <laughs> right? <clears throat> but literally I was telling him that if he doesn't sit the fuck down, I was going to murder this guy. I was so fucking pissed. But literally Paul was telling me that he was like, yeah, that when I, I didn't realize until later that you're about to fight this dude. And afterwards <laughs> I was like, yo, what's up? And he was like, but you already threatened to kill this guy. And then you said you're going to fucking beat his girlfriend's ass too for fucking mouthing off to you too. And the guys just walked up and left because they were so oh, scared. Geez. But it was just one of those. It's just always something was happening in Cape Town, dude. If you like, want your life to be interesting and it 
almost doesn't have anything or you can be involved <laughs> yeah live in k-town <laughs> mm-hmm. you'll see something something happens. you'll see some of the weirdest shit that happens yeah. what was the topic of this po- oh yeah so we're gonna talk <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, like this, we we go on uh, on weird diatribes, but we actually want to talk. We haven't done a, a fucking movie podcast right. in, in a very long time, yeah. right? But I do want to start this before we go off. So, we'll talk about Tenet, right? And yeah. we usually talk about a lot of Korean films or yeah. Asian American films, right? But I want to talk about Tenet because I didn't understand this film at all, and I watched it twice on a plane, and it made me mad. So <laughs> okay. I got really fucking angry. So, um, I have been. And this may seem like I'm being a little pessimistic when it comes to Asian American films, right? Mm. But I don't have anything against Asian American films. I am an Asian American. I'm looking for great films. Minari was fucking amazing. I thought that movie was really good. But when an Asian American film isn't good, I'm not going to say that it's good just because I'm an Asian American. Right. right? And you need to hype it for the culture. Exactly. I think that our voice is being heard now Mm. and that now we have to go and show people that we have the chops to make really great films. We've seen that in Korean film. We've seen in Japanese film. We've seen it in Chinese films. Well, now we have this genre of Asian American films that need to be created that can be really great. Yeah. So I'm looking for great stuff, right? Mm. Um, Many people might disagree with me on this. I did not like Raya. I thought Raya was a fucking big miss. And also, too, I tried what listen, I'm a big fan of Eddie Huang. Yeah. I think Eddie Huang's vibe is dope. Like he's when he speaks, he's super, he's prolific at everything that he talks about. I watched Boogie. That was one of the worst films that I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Like I fuck with Eddie Huang fucking heavy. But there were so many bad things about that writing. Yeah. It was unreal. And I expected, and because Eddie Huang, I put him on a pedestal. I expected a lot better from right. him, right? Like even it was just terrible how corny it was. <laughs> it's and like was he holding on to fresh off the boat kind of stuff? It's like you know? holding on to the very nineties weird Asian right. tropes and jokes, right? Right. Which, is it set in the nineties? It's. I don't think it is. I don't. I, I never. I didn't get to watch the whole film. I okay. watched like about 10, 15 minutes. Before you were skipped like, through, try to give it a chance, and I, I just hated it. Yeah. It was just hard to watch. There was just weird things that. Number one just didn't make sense from not just from a filmmaker's perspective, but from a viewer's perspective, right? Right. So, for example, just off the jump, the the humor and the writing was really bad. All right. So there's just in the beginning of the movie, you have this conversation with Eddie and uh, the main character, Boogie, and like his uncle. And they're kind of setting up that he plays basketball and the intro goes or whatever. <clears throat> the next thing you know. He's in class and this is there's the love interest, right? First of all, the casting for the Asian guy, he looked like he was 35. Yeah, he's supposed to be in high school or something. Yeah, I think he's supposed to be in high school. <laughs> and he's like 35. He looked like he's 35 fucking years old. Yeah. And there's this girl, hot black girl that he likes, right? He's like staring at her. But the way he stares at her, it looks like he's about to roofie her drink. Mm. You know, that's what it looks like. It's it's very weird. What a very weird. What? <laughs> But the line off the jump was just really corny. It's, it's so she, you know, she's she comes to class kind of late or whatever. She says her name and then she has an opinion about something that's weird. And then he makes a comment to what she's saying. And the professor asks what, what that dude's name is or the teacher. And he goes, he goes, this is my name. And he goes, but my stripper name is Boogie. That's the joke. And it's just all I heard in, my, in the back of my head was. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> it, it, uh, yeah, burr, yeah. Burr, burr. I'm uh, like, boy, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and then there would have been anything exactly. And then it skipped <laughs> over to this scene where she's having this conversation with you know Boogie is in the gym and he's staring at the two girls, right? Uh, it's it's mm-hmm. the girl that's his love interest and a girl and his home girl, and they're talking about how like, oh yeah, I probably I let him get it if he's a uh, if he would if he stops staring at me so weird. And then her friend says this line that just ripped my soul apart. She goes, yeah, I wouldn't mind sucking on his, you know, sweet spare rib. Sweet spare rib. Like Chinese food joke. And it's like, uh, Eddie, man, aren't you supposed to be like the progressive? <laughs> and I guess like maybe in his defense, these are probably jokes they heard when he was a kid, right? right. Or whatever. But it was so, it, it reminded me of a bad 90s film. Right. With like bad 90s Asian jokes, right? Is it some kind of like. 2020 Joy Luck Club or 2021 Joy Luck Club. Something. It was like like, an ode to like maybe how it was in the past, which you can do that by the way the film looks, but it doesn't have to be like that in the dialogue. Right. (laughs) You you know what I mean? 
And then there was also Charlemagne the God that was in there, and he was the the the, the scout. And also like the casting for Charlemagne. I know I think Charlemagne the God was like an executive producer. Right. Maybe that's why he had a role in the film. He did not fit that role <laughs> at all. He's supposed to be like a, a scout for the NBA or something like that, right? right? And so he comes in or a college scout or something. Comes in and Charlemagne the God is how Charlemagne the God is. And he's making his jokes, but he comes in and you could tell when they're allowing artistic freedom for an actor to go ahead and just say whatever they want. Yeah. And Charlemagne the God is being Charlemagne the God. And he's a he's a scout. Yeah. All a scout has to do <laughs> is say scout shit. Yeah. It, it, like his comedic relief made no sense in the film. So before he walks into the house and he's about to meet like Boogie's parents or whatever, he goes in and he goes, yeah. He goes, he goes, oh, do I take my shoes off? He's like, yeah, yeah, I respect that. I respect it. That's cool. And, and he's just sitting here like, oh, this place is real nice. Like saying all this stupid random dialogue. <laughs> like it's absolutely pointless. Like would somebody like a scout, NBA scout, like coming in and out of your house. Like do that. Do Say this weird shit? shit. No. It doesn't make sense. And it's like the humor was just there just to be hu- like, it's so apparent that it's trying to be funny that it's not. Mm. You know? <laughs> yeah. And I just, I was so disappointed in that film, film Boogie. And that's the kind of thing I look at with Asian American film mm-hmm. where you're like, you get mixed between the art of filmmaking and knowing how to make a film, right? Just down to its fundamentals and copying what a movie is supposed to mm-hmm. be like, right? And just copying and then trying to make a cash cow thing out of it or whatever. And it's like, man, you made a very expensive mistake then. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, you know, Eddie Huang, too, to his credit, you know, he's always unapologetically himself, which I really do appreciate, right? Yeah. But that doesn't mean he's going to make a good film. Is this based off of him? Could be. I know that he loves older, fresh out the boat. It's if like Eddie from the TV show got older. Well, yeah, and then also too, the reason why I was disappointed was because he was very adamant about how much executives ruin fresh off the boat and his personal story. So I'm like, oh, he gets to shine and see what he's gonna do. And I'm like, bro, your yeah, your fucking (laughs) movie was just as corny as fresh off the boat. What the fuck are you talking about? You had the executive control, and it didn't turn out any better. Making yeah. a film is really hard. Like yeah. I said, I'm not knocking on his uh, what he did, which is amazing. You know, he made a film. It's dope. But making a film is uh, it's really difficult. I don't think people understand how hard it is. Yeah. And people sometimes say to me, why don't you direct your own film? Oh, yeah, right, jackass. <laughs> how the fuck would I direct my own film? It's not that easy. Like, do you have like six figures just to start? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, too, people don't understand. There's a reason why a lot of these YouTubers who make their own film, it's terrible because they grossly undermine or undervalue or appreciate the value of what a good director does. Yeah. It's like, oh, that movie used a red camera. We got a red camera, too. Mm-hmm. That does shit doesn't the matter. Camera doesn't mean yeah. shit. I keep telling people this, right? The skill set that's involved to create a film is way beyond just the equipment being used. Yeah. The equipment is the bonus. That's that's exactly what it is. Everybody keeps asking me. I tweeted this shit out too. And I, I wanted people to understand this shit for real. Because everybody asks, yo, I'm getting in the film. What should I get? Uh, should I get like a Sony uh, A7S III or should I just go ahead and get like a like a, like a red scar, like mm-hmm. a used one? And I always write back and I wrote back, you suck. <laughs> It doesn't matter what you fucking buy. That's it's true. still going yeah. to suck. It doesn't fucking matter. Right. And they don't understand that. They think that if they buy better equipment, that their film is going to be better. No, you're going to make a $15,000 regret. Exactly. Like, because you actually, just because you bought a nicer camera means that you can control it better than a DSLR. Right. DSLRs are way easier to use than film cameras. Yeah. Lighting matters in these in these film cameras, yeah. right? Because lighting is everything. These are controlled scenarios. Like I started school before like HD was a standard. Like we were working in standard def and all of these things and then learning HD as it came into the fray in the middle of my school year and all this shit, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's what I learned between using HD and the standard diff cameras. I'd go um, uh, get to check out uh, one of the HD cameras, right? But because I didn't know how to manipulate light well, because I wasn't learning how to con- um, composite my shots, it still looked like shit, just in higher resolution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just got, you got a 4K shitty image sometimes if just because you have a nice camera doesn't like, if you can't light it, if you can't you know, set it up. Everything. Yeah. It's literally everything. everything. And people, 
and here and I'm around a lot of some like some of these young creators where they talk about camera specs. It's like I don't give a fuck about your camera spec. Your videos mm. are trash. You don't know how to use any of this stuff. Yeah. Like that's the problem. Dude, uh 28 days later, later. They shot that in an XL1 Canon DV camera. That's right? fucking crazy. They dude. shot that in SD. It's a standard def movie. Yeah. They shot it on DV. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Cult classic, great, made millions of dollars, all that shit. It didn't matter what fucking camera they used. Exactly. They use that camera because it looks like handheld, like home footage. And they and they were like, they wanted it to look like if they made a movie in the apocalypse, yeah. they wouldn't have access to these yeah. really expensive cameras, right? That's, That's the saying. idea. The, even when people choose their cameras, there's an art behind it too. Yeah. yeah. I, and I, I think that's like the biggest fallacy with this new generation of creators and filmmakers. They think that you need bigger, better stuff rather than learning how to work on the craft. Yeah. This isn't just old head talk. This is legit how film and creating works. Like they go, cool. I made three minute sketches. Guess what? Next step, full feature yeah. film. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You want to know how to break it down between seven acts now? Yeah. Like. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. It doesn't work that way. There's a reason why you see a lot of YouTubers who do films. They're hot trash. Minus me and Gook. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> hey, so, we're going to give it up to that, bro. But the reason why is because I wasn't directing that. Yeah. I wasn't. Mm. It was Justin. And Justin is the guy who's a seasoned actor who's been around film people his whole life. That motherfucker watches like 10, 12 films a week. Right. Just because he loves that craft that much. And that's the dedication that it takes for you to become a great storyteller. Mm. And that's what film is. And so you see all the stuff where they have, this is what a lot of people do is because I, I used to do this a lot too, where there's like a joke or an idea mm. and they focus on the joke and the idea rather than the whole story. And so you see these random sporadic moments in these films where they're like, oh, I, I I remember this time when I was a kid and somebody said this joke. I'm going to put it in this film. <laughs> cool. What the fuck is the film about? Yeah. Fuck your joke. So that's the problem with a lot of these modern movies, though. They set it up. Okay, so it's a perfect example. The Fast and the Furious series, right? Oh, yeah. Look, when Justin Lin came in in Fast and the Furious Part 4, 5, 6, those were... Oh, he did Tokyo Drift, too. Yeah. He rebooted that shit to a place where it's going to make money. Like, those mm -hmm. were the best Fast movies. Yeah. Was Tokyo Drift 4, 5, and 6. Mm -hmm. and, and he left... After part six and seven was hot trash. Eight is trash too. And you can see it where it's like, um, like before they write a script, they're like, oh, we should have cars parachute out of a plane. It's the uh, idea. We should have, a, yeah, we should have a car go through three buildings and survive. Uh, we should have a race towards uh, through downtown LA and there's a missile helicopter chasing them or some shit, right? They make the ideas, then they write the script behind it. The, the story to do the stunts. Fast and Furious has literally become the best comedy I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's one of the funniest fucking films I've yeah. ever seen. But that's why I'm excited about Fast 9 because Justin Lin's coming back. Dude, It's it literally Fast and Furious became a, a – it was a movie about – Misfits that drive cars. Yes. Now it is basically the Marvel superhero film. Yeah, they're like 007 ages, all of them. They yeah. can't die, you know? And Dude. it's like in their contracts, it's written so they can't actually lose a fight either. Get the fuck That's out of here. That's in their contract. Have you noticed though? They since, never lose fights. Since Fast Five, nobody actually loses a fight. It has to either be a draw, right? Or they don't lose. Dude, there was one scene in the Fast and Furious series that cracked me the fuck up, man. All right. It was, it was, it was, they were on a bridge and there was tanks. Yeah. Which, yeah. which, which movie was this? That was Fast Six. For sure. But Dom Toretto flies to like another oh, car, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. And when he got up, it was the cleanest t shirt I've ever <laughs> seen. It was so, if you look at the film, the lines on the shirt that was just brandly open, it's still on him. Yeah. Just the physics of how fast a tank is going and the force it's going at. Then it gets stopped at a complete stop. Then he flies in the air, catches Let Letty through the air, and a windshield stops him. <laughs> Not a. <laughs> but that's the beauty of it when you embrace that. Not a fucking... single scratch. Yeah. <laughs> and his t-shirt unscathed. Yeah. <laughs> the most, the nicest shirt I've ever seen in my fucking life. I promise you guys, like something about it. Like maybe I, 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 I watched every to film in theaters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah me too. <laughs> just to let you know, I, I just have a thing for Justin Lin. I think, I, I think he does make good films, especially with the Fast series. I'm just, ex I'm just ready for it because I think he does know how to make films. Like very well, even though it's hammy, right? It's fucking corn, right? Yeah. 
but in his head, it's still this happened, therefore this in the story. And because of this, this happened, therefore this. Dude, later, no. fast, in other words, it's just fucking stunt, 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 stunt. And like Vin Diesel's voice is almost in yeah. awe. <laughs> it's so deep. I don't know what the fuck he's saying. He's just growling throughout the whole film now. That's probably part of the shtick now. It's like probably his own Arnold, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's okay if you don't understand him, just like Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> That's your thing, Ben. He's like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's about family. It's always about family. <laughs> you know, I forgot my family. Yeah. I remember I was there by my father. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is this guy saying, dude? Dude, have you, bro? I went on a whole binge yesterday of watching Tyrese lose his mind. Yeah, what the fuck was that? Like, I think it started with The Rock. The Rock fucked with him when his album released. Oh wait, it was when uh. Wait, I, he got upset at The Rock because he was doing his own spinoff versus doing another Fast, yeah. Fast and Furious. Yeah. And in the middle of filming that, Tyrese released an album, right? Mm -hmm. And The Rock made a video on social media. I remember this. Mm -hmm. He was like, hey, guys, uh, I just I was on my plane and I'm here to film my new movie. Right. And he's just like and he's wearing a suit and everything. He looks super sharp. And uh, I heard my boy Tyrese came out with a new album. Right. All right. So I listened to it on the plane. Right. And he's like, well, you know what I think? This is fucking shit. This shit is fucking hard, hot garbage. It's fucking disgusting. And he threw it out. Like He's he like, always fucked Tyrese. Like he fucks around with Kevin Hart like that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he was serious. Oh, for real? He was ang He was serious rock. Like fuck Tyrese. Fuck this shit. This sounds, sounds like shit, doesn't it? Hey, right? Everybody here? You all heard it, right? Sounds like shit, right? Yeah. Fuck Tyrese. Oh, for real? It's a video. Yeah, he fucking made that. You can see it. <laughs> like, he was serious. He was serious. And I think that started Tyrese's fucking down, like mental downward spiral. spiral. While the rock is like rising. <laughs> I had no fucking idea. Yeah, that's pretty sure I, it started. I thought it was because he, because of the fact that he started a new film and then obviously Tyrese is like, he's messing with my money, my family's money. Exactly. And then he went through the whole custody issue with his daughter and they did that fucking Animaniacs joke about him. <laughs> what? Ed, did you see this? <laughs> Animaniacs? Ed, oh my God. Hold on a second. I have to show you this. So there was this trend where they started kind of melodyning the voice of people to match the Animaniacs. Animani, totally insane. I'm going to type in right now Animaniacs Tyrese and it's the okay. funniest shit you'll ever hear. It's kind of sad because Tyrese is losing his mind, but he's acting like a crazy person because he's crying to, you know, talking about his his daughter that he might lose and how much he misses her because he hasn't seen her in a while. Okay. And so he's crying in this video, but somebody took an audio snippet and put it into the Animaniacs track. All right. And it blew the fuck up, dude. I just want my baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh no bro the internet never loses <laughs> I my baby. bro i never oh laughed my so gosh. hard at a video <laughs> the internet is so fucked up but he was losing his mind dude did you see how he was trying to promote his album his last album no no ed it's the worst it's just sad right this dude got so much fucking <laughs> if you okay well, let's start with this this dude got so much flack from a bunch of publications and people in the comments, right? So his thing is that he is like the voice of R&B because he does real R&B and he does. He's a great R&B singer. I love all of his fucking OG tracks, right? right. He also started up a group with uh, with Tank and Genuine called TGT, which is really dope, but they only did one album. And then right. fucking, he decides to do a post where there is a lady that is sleeping in a bush on a lamb, an older woman, like a grandma, and he makes this post, like a very serious post. He goes, you see this? There's people out here sleeping on R&B. Like, can you believe her? Oh, oh, my God. And this lady is sleeping with her mouth open. And he uses her what? as an example. So What? Turns out that lady is fucking homeless. Of course. A what? Homeless, what? And he's like, they're sleeping on R&B. And he's making this joke <laughs> about the homeless lady. Why? And this lady's like, what the fuck are you doing? And people are like, what made you think that was a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> Why the fuck would you do that? And so he go he does he makes a video and he goes back to that spot to explain himself. And the explanation is not any no. better. He goes, I'm just trying to put out a point that people are sleeping on R and B and that's why I recorded this woman. It's like it still doesn't make it okay. And he goes, I didn't know she was homeless. <laughs> still not okay. Yeah. So 
his album flopped, right? Yeah, of course. And he was losing a lot of money, right? Mm-hmm. I remember this story somehow. This is when I was all over the news and shit about yeah. this. Do you know who saved him? Who? Will and Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. They, because he was also made a post about how he's going broke now because his album flopped and everything's falling I apart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All that shit, right? So they gave him $5 million loan. <gasps> get back on his feet and they said get off social media until the fast and furious shit. yes until fast and, and furious. they get the check back he could pay yeah, them back yeah you know what's even crazier about that shit though it's like he he didn't do a good job because he was on social media and let me tell you this i, I will show you this video later and i'll put it in this in, in this video <laughs> but i'll just explain it to you so tyrese he's like on this philanthropic vibe right where he sees this homeless guy. He's a very handsome dude. Green eyes. He looks like he could be some surfer dude, but he's homeless. And he goes, I'm over here. I'm over here on Melrose and whatever in Beverly Hills or yeah. whatever. And I see this billboard. You see that billboard? I used to model a lot. I was a model. I used to be on those billboards. And this is a homeless guy right here. And this guy is handsome. He's a handsome man. No, you know, pause, whatever. And I just need, I'm, I'm a man. I've been blessed with social media by God. And I'm going to change this man's life. Listen, oh. and he comes up to him and he talks to him. He goes, hey, man, he's like, yeah, I'm homeless. I'm out in these streets, but, you know, I was a drug addict and then I got myself cleaned up and now it's really hard for me to get a job. He goes, cool, cool, cool. Well, I am blessed with social media prints. So anybody out there that can help this man, get, <laughs> when he is somebody who can fucking help him Ooh. and he's on Instagram live saying, can somebody help this man, please? He goes, hold on. I got something for you. He walks over to his car. Opens up his car, his SUV, his Escalator, whatever, right? Looks into his bag. He digs into it, right? I'm like, damn, he's about uh, to give him some money. He pulls out his album. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he pulls out his album and gives it to him. When this guy is broke and he needs money, he goes, God bless. He goes, hey, you got, you got, he goes, I have a CD player. He goes, good, man. He goes, like, good. Hey, man, that's tight. You got a CD player. Oh Here, let me, let me gift you with this album of mine. He goes, number one album in multiple countries. He goes, here, this is my gift to you. Instead Multiple of, countries excluding America. <laughs> excluding America. <laughs> he gives his homeless. He's, so he's using this as a as a as a launching point to promote his album. Dude, he's like, I fucked up last time. How do I help homeless people? <laughs> <laughs> That's really the move that he's doing. Dude, Come, he's he's so disconnected from reality. Yeah, right? and this yeah. guy looks like, what the fuck? Just give me some money, bro. <laughs> I'm broke. He gives him his oh, album, God. his failed album. And then you look in his Instagram. This is where it gets worse. It's just it's videos of him, of him in the subway system in New York. Just talk. He goes, hello, everybody. My name is Tyrese. I'm an independent artist. I, this is my first <laughs> independent album without a label. And this is my album that is, is debuting. And the video ends. That's it. That's it. You're not. Hey, it has no point. You're not gonna like sing in the subway. You're not gonna like nothing. <laughs> and then you can see people are completely disinterested, completely disinterested. And he posts the next video where it's him just recording his face. He sits down and he turns the camera over to a lady, and she goes, "Hey, you, you Tyrese, right?" And he looks back. His face looks pissed, and the end video ends. <laughs> this guy, he's lost his fucking mind, dude. These are like basic social media, <laughs> like. Like <laughs> he filmed a homeless person to sleeping as a point, as a launching point to say people are sleeping on my music. Like, bro, what are you thinking, you fucking maniac? Man, <laughs> I, I'm speechless. Like this, guy I'm spe- fucking- I li- I love this fool's music. I mean, is it any more different than when you say, like, remember that girl who like fake like she was drilling in some oh fucking plates God. for like. When the wall, protect, yeah. yeah, that kind the of the BLM shit, right? thing, yeah, the BLM goes, thing. Good luck, to everybody. BLM, thanks, thanks. It's Get great. in our cars and just drives home. <laughs> yep, in her fucking Mercedes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, isn't it just another version of that where it it is just this? No matter what class you're in, these people are just disconnected from realities. They get just lost in social media or their quote unquote fame. <laughs> it's just what's wrong with him. <laughs> I don't know, but he definitely needs help, man. Yeah. Like the whole crying in front. I mean, shout out to the person who made the Animaniacs. Thing. That is hilarious. <laughs> I didn't mean my baby. <laughs> can you can you can you fathom how rich Will and Jada Pinkett Smith are to the point where they could just give away five million on a loan? I dream. I dream of having money just to give away. 
Yeah. You know? But <laughs> you can give five million like it's nothing. It's like, yeah. oh, five million, whatever. Just, That's cool. just stay off social media. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. And he literally can't do it. He was like, thank you. I appreciate you, Jada, Will. You're the best. Which I don't even think he should have released that information like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure Jada, and Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith did not appreciate that. When they told you to get off social media. <laughs> yeah. Was, hey, here's five million. It's a loan. All you have to do is not be on social media. The next day, Jada and Will, thank you so much <laughs> yeah. for giving me this five million. He's a fucking weirdo, dude. He was the one that... Release the information that Dr. Dre um, had that Apple deal where they were buying Beats and it was going to make him a billionaire, right? Get the fuck out of here. And he got on Instagram like, yeah, we're doing it. We're like, we, we doing it. <laughs> like, we, yeah. And like, like hyping up like Apple buying um, Beats by Dre and Dr. Dre becoming a billionaire. He must went, be pissed. And Doc Trey got pissed. And even Snoop Dogg, there's a part in that doc, I think it's on Apple uh, mm-hmm. Plus. Yeah, that shit. They're, they're just about that Tyrese, that stupid motherfucker. And even Doc Trey is like, just him, just uh, <laughs> just shaking his head. Like, Dude, there was a... Almost cost him a billion dollars. He's so fucking stupid. Yeah. Why would he do that? Just, I, oh, here's another thing. I remember he lost like some $50,000 chain jet skiing. During MTV Spring Break. <laughs> oh my God. So he's been a problem for a yeah, long ass time. For a dude. long time. <laughs> Tyrese is fucking nuts, man. That's so crazy. <laughs> Isn't it weird how I, how do I know these stories? Yeah. I don't follow it. It's just he just shows up on the news for some he just has bunk so ass many reason. Weird antics. Yeah. And Dr. Dre recently just went through that crazy divorce re- like for eight hundred million dollars. <laughs> That's dude. all his Apple money. <laughs> yeah, it's it's something ridiculous. Oh but God. then all these stories about Dr. Dre being like an abusive husband, like beating his wife, everything's starting to come up. And they they took that part of the movie, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. They skipped the part where he beat up that MTV VJ too. Yeah. Oh man, they skip they they made that scene where he was driving because he was pissed in his Ferrari because Easy E's got AIDS and he was dying. So yeah. He was pissed, right? But mm-hmm. he was DUI, drunk and driving, fucking yeah. around in reality. <laughs> like, no, people don't know about these celebrities, man. Like, I keep telling you, man, just because I don't know why people assume that human beings on a public platform are really good people. How come they get the benefit of the doubt of being a good human being? Because we like stories. Hmm. We need protagonists. And we need antagonists. But there is a sense of people, specifically marketing, specifically, obviously, I mean, we're going to talk about movies. Um, we have this tendency as humans, even in our personal lives, to make ourselves a hero, right? Yeah. This is Dr. Dre's movie. Of course. <laughs> of course. Dr. Dre is going to yeah. be the shit. So, I mean, it's one of those things like we're not going to make us our, ourselves the antagonist. Yeah. But- if you can just step out of that and stop telling stories, but tell them objectively as they are, I can tell you about the time I tried to fuck someone up and totally failed. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? That I would make that part of my life story and it would be a comedic story. But in Straight Outta Compton, maybe it's not so funny to be a woman, right? Yeah. Like yeah, it's not yeah, something yeah. you really, whatever. And there's not a real character arc for him there or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I could see if you had the control or some shit like that, you're not going to want that shit out. Yeah, you know? <laughs> like, it just when I when I see people have a very odd perception of themselves too. Where I I even think to the point where people they don't think that they have flaws. Oh my gosh! Like people suck their own dick so hard. Yeah, especially when some people show me their music or there's like some kind of video that they're doing and they expect a certain reaction because they think it's the most amazing thing on earth. Yeah, which makes me wonder. It's like who who is in your circle? It goes back to Tyrese. Who the fuck is in Tyrese's circle? Okay, so I'm gonna tell you this story. You know this guy named Sam Ock, right? Yeah, chubby Christian artist, right? My sister is a big fan of his. Mm-hmm. And I listen to his music because of the mutual friends we work through. Yeah. You know, guess what? He ended up at Fishbowl one day. He was mm-hmm. just chilling there. I was like, oh shit. Right? Mutual friends in production, whoever, this, that girl who used to break into her apartment, through yeah, her, yeah, I guess, yeah. you know? And um, I was like, yo, what's up, dude? Like, I've been listening to music a long time. My sister's a huge fan. Shook his hand and goes, I know you, you're at Park. I was like, oh shit, like, how do you know me, mm-hmm. right? And he goes, you told this girl her music video sucked and she quit video. 
because of you. And I was like, uh, uh, and he just looked away. And I was like, and I stepped back like, the fuck was that all about? Like, I just met you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I was thinking so hard, what the, who the fuck is he talking about? And this guy's from the East Coast, right? Yeah. And I remembered, I remembered fucking 10 years ago, right? I got this DM from a girl because I was making these videos um, and she saw my shit and she sent me a DM like, hey, I'm making a music video. What do you think of this? And honestly, it was terrible. Yeah. It was. Um, I just, I didn't say it sucks, don't put it out, whatever. I said, um, you shot this in the dark and you have no lights. And you shot it with DV camera that's not good with no lights. And I said, you can't re-edit this or color it because there's no light information. You got to shoot it again. You need lights. And that's what I remember. Apparently, I made her fucking quit. Okay. Her, her career. Let's, let's just shit. talk about this for a second. Number one, don't ask people to critique your stuff expecting praise. Right. You already fucked up. That means you're already sucking your own dick. With this girl, she's already fucking sucking your own pussy. <laughs> like you're... <laughs> You expected. I haven't heard it that way, but okay. Yeah, she was over here just fucking sucking her own pussy. Like, you know, so she asked you for critique. I don't the, know who this girl is. You don't know who she is, and the, what she expected you was to validate what she wanted to hear. Number one, lady, you already fucked up. Number three, number two, or number three, whatever. Yeah. Num number seventeen. Yeah. Here's the other problem with that, right? Yeah. And this is the the the, the big issue with that as well. If some random person telling you that you did something wrong in your video broke your spirit to make me a video, that means you suck. You are a brittle, brittle human being. Yeah, you weren't meant to do this in the first yeah, place. Exactly. If it took a random human being to say that, hey, you have made a few mistakes on this, this is what you should redo, was the reason why you quit, you are making excuses. You right. blamed it on a random person because you knew that you didn't have the skills to do it. None that I meet this guy who I appreciate for his, his art and his music, and he automatically thinks I'm a fucking asshole as soon as he saw me. That's probably because he liked the girl or something. <laughs> yeah, that uh, makes sense. A hundred percent. A hundred percent that means he liked that girl. No, no, nobody would ever defend somebody that hard out of nowhere to be his a fucking knight in shining armor unless he liked that girl yeah. or if it was somebody really, really important to him, right? Because right now, I guarantee he went back and he told that girl that story. Hey, I stood up for you. And I told that girl <laughs> off. But well, I just, yeah, fuck that shit, dude. Sam Ock, fuck you, dude. Like, you should have just went to him and like, shit. it's like, hey, brother, <laughs> let me show you the DM. I yeah. said, I critiqued her video. And if she quit because of this, it's because she Sucks. She sucked then, dude. It is what it is. Yeah. What, what were you expecting to hear, though? And I had, like, forgotten about that shit. It was, like, and it was just, peak. I only remember because it was so fucking random. Yeah. And then I put two and two together. They're both from Virginia. And I was, like, oh, like, this fucking, this is the dumbest shit I've ever But that's like, so weird, though. It was just, like, well, because well, I know him, too, right? He's, like, super nice to me, right? But I'm just trying to understand in that situation. It's, just like, what were you going to do? Were you going to fight him? Yeah. Why would you do that? That's, and that's another thing where I stand at too. If you want to talk to me, bro, like I don't think nicely of you. <laughs> I think you're a piece of shit. <laughs> and if I see you, I'll fuck you up this time too. You know? That, that's so random. Why would I'm, you do I'll that? probably miss my punch. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, hey, hey let me but tell you something. I don't care about threatening to beat you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, but fuck you anyway, bitch. Hey, let me tell you something, man. <laughs> the next time I see you, I'm going to miss my first punch. <laughs> But the second one, you better watch yeah, you the better fuck watch out, it, it's, motherfucker. It's you Christian happen. singer. Yeah. <laughs> well, you. that's the. I, don't, I wonder why he did that. He doesn't. Seem I don't like, know. Like, he's like five foot three, maybe. He's like, why would you do that? I don't know. I mean, hey, I was also a chubby dude at that time. Mm, but maybe he was, he was, he's also fat too, though. Yeah, maybe we were both unassuming. He thought he was better than me. <laughs> that's so funny. Both of you was like, you fat. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, he's fatter than me. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Both of you guys are fat as fuck. Look at yeah. each other. I'm gonna beat this fat yeah. ass. And you're like, I'm gonna beat this fat ass. Yeah, I'll fuck you up, fat boy. Yeah. You can't be slower Too, than me. Yeah. Dude, fat boys resenting each yeah. other. That's so uh, weird. That's so weird that was, he would do that. It was it was completely weird. And it, honestly, here's the thing. Um, do you see Louis C.K. came out came out with a new stand up? Special? Oh, really? On his website because he can distribute it himself, right? Yeah, make all that money. I didn't see it yet, but a clip of it put out 
uh, came out and he just talks about his shit, right? And it comes down to your kinks, right? Your sexual mm-hmm. kinks. And he's like, you know, your kink is your kink. Don't tell anyone about it. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, you know, even if you ask them, right? And they say yes, don't even do it. Don't <laughs> yeah, do it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was thinking about it. I was like, this girl asked me what I thought about her work, you know? Mm-hmm. And because I gave my honest opinion, she quit. He asked this girl if he could like do something infinitely crazy and weird and it made her quit. Mm-hmm. And I think like, I was like, why are you doing this then? If you, okay, wait, that was fucked up. I know what you mean. Two different though. things, I, but I, it was I know just what you like, mean, yeah. I know what you mean. Right. I mean, like you're, you're, I know what you mean. I'm not like, I didn't sexually harass this girl, but it was, it was one of those things like, like, well, it, you're kind of being, this, you like, me for, this. for this girl, it's like you, why are you asking me to critique your video and I critique it? And then you're like, what the fuck? I'm a stranger. And you expected a stranger to lie to you and say it was good. Yeah. What was the point of that? Yeah. Also, too, when you're in a creative space, you need people to critique your work who are better than you at what you do. That's how you get better. There's you. Why would you ask? I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. If let's say if I'm if I want to go into acting again, right? Like I'm a full time actor, mm-hmm. and then I do this audition tape and I send it to Justin, who I highly respect. Yeah. And Justin goes, "Dude, this shit is terrible. Like, what the fuck were you doing with this line? You didn't emote here, like." Your, your body manners are really awkward. You look very weird. Yeah. I'm not going to go to my room and be like, mm. you know, <laughs> I, I'm quitting. I'm quitting because of Justin Chan. Yeah. No, I'd be like, cool. This is somebody I respect and admire. I got to change this stuff or this or this tape is going to be terrible. He knows what he's talking about. And that's what's kind of weird because I, 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 maybe I thought about this too much because this girl had it in mind to remember that and then tell another influencer about that in hopes that this guy will one day meet me. And this guy in his head said, one day if I meet Ed Park, I'm gonna tell him what's up. And fucking years later, we actually meet. And that's the first thing he tells me. I'm like, bro, you're a fucking weirdo. <laughs> what, was he, what was he doing at Fishbowl? He was just chilling. I don't know. He was there. And oh, I just he's, said he's hi. He's worked with uh, Clara before. Probably. I don't know. But Maybe it was something. just like, that was the weirdest fucking introduction I've ever had. I was like, you. what were you going to do, man? What was I? Yeah. Like, also, if you're a nice guy, just be a fucking nice guy, man. That's all I said. Oh, dude, I've heard of you. You've heard your music. My my sister's a huge fan. I know you. You made someone quit their career. (laughs) That's not like fighting words. Yeah. (laughs) Like, what am I supposed to do? And then he just looked away, like, uh, and ignored me. That's so weird. weird. But it's also, you know, you're in the studio of my best friend, right? Like, what are you doing here? I don't know. How odd. Like, I, sometimes I wonder what goes on in people's heads when they do that. It's because it's so easy just to say words without Self-righteousness. Maybe. Mm-hmm. It like could be the Christian. Did, they did the right thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it could be that Christian knight in shining armor type of shit, dude. Yeah. It's like, it could be the opa thing. I, st- I stood up for her as her opa, and now I'm, I'm, I'm the good guy. Yeah. I remember that. Remember when you told me that fucking seven years ago? Oh, yeah. I finally saw him. <laughs> like, yeah. That's well, weird. Dude. I just don't understand what the end result is, right? So, for example, let's – and I've told multiple stories, too, where, you know, I have trouble controlling my mouth, but I have a point in what I say. And yeah. then I'll continue this conversation with that person, right? So if somebody says something really weird to me or they kind of break up the mood, I look at them and I go, why did you do that? What, what are you doing? And the reason why I address that is because I'm trying to get them to stop doing that so we can continue a good conversation. Yeah. That's the point. Mm. So for in his case, when he confronted you, was like, you're the guy that did that. <laughs> what next? <laughs> Are you going to say, let's take it outside? Are you going to... Is he going to... Tell start? me to call her and apologize? What was like, the point? What? And he just said what he said. And then he goes, oh, shit. Let me look off. <laughs> <laughs> Let me let me look off into Maybe the distance. Maybe that's what happened. Yeah, and this fool just fucking looks off to the distance, and starts opening up a book backwards. Yeah. <laughs> starts reading. <laughs> what were you gonna do, man? Like, what's no. the, what's the end game? And buddy? I was caught by surprise too, like, cause I'm not the like, let's fucking go. Like, I had to think about what the fuck this guy talking about. Yeah, yeah, like he knows me because of that, and I had to think through. It was like, oh my god, that girl, <laughs> like, because of this stupid thing. Yeah, it's fucking not using lights in a video. <laughs> I and that's said, the reason why she lights. quit. That's what I said. Use you need lights. How Cameras, is that? 
absorb light. <laughs> That's what they're for. And also, and so, and it goes back to the whole thing where you know when people talk about really good cameras and stuff, yeah, they don't know how cameras work. And they're also the DSLR is kind of what it did a lot of great things in allowing uh, low budget films to be made. But then people now assume that these film cameras work like DSLRs, and it's yeah, not that case. Not that. DSLRs are full frame cameras. The sensors are way fucking bigger and they're made to absorb a lot more light yeah. because number one, they were photo cameras first and then they were film cameras. Yeah. All that codec, the coloring, all that is already pre described. Yeah. Right. It's in there. You don't really have to do much, right? That's yeah. why people like Canon colors. People tend to dislike Sony colors, though they fixed a lot of those issues lately. Yeah. But they don't understand that. For example, too, they didn't understand. But when people bought uh, reds, Right, yeah. like they're like, oh my god, anything past ISO eight hundred, which is really high, yeah. or ISO six hundred is super grainy. Like, like a, <laughs> yeah. what the fuck? Like my DSLR, I'll push it to ISO two thousand or whatever shutter angle, whatever their shutter angle is, right? Yeah, and it's perfectly fine. I was like, yeah, because you're working with the DSLR. It's made for people to do sh shit on the run and gun, so yeah. you don't have to think about much. And they kind of base it off the A A seven S platforms, right? right? Where it's a twelve megapixel sensor, which each fucking megapixel is made to absorb a shit ton of light. Right. And so when you are out, when you're doing these travel vlogs and yeah. you're doing these really sh these shots that you need to get in really tight spaces in the middle of the night, that's what it's for. So they'll like copy and paste their color correction for their cam, like Canon MP fours. Mm -hmm. And then like throw it onto their red footage and it looks like shit. Like yeah. it's like, yo, raw footage is different. A hundred percent. Yeah. And they'll it, just buy like just because it's an expensive camera. Or yeah. It's just a, a lot of the stuff they're they're expecting shortcuts and they don't understand that it, it's just a different thing. You have to know how to shoot things. Yeah. Lighting is so fucking important. Lighting is the hardest thing, dude. Like even I still don't understand to this oh, yeah. day. I, I just know when I like a shot, but I don't know how to mold the light in the scene. I'm such a novice. Like I only do like three point lighting. <laughs> like, yeah, same here, I, dude. Yeah. Um, and where's like, my key light, fill light, headlight? <laughs> yeah, specifically. <laughs> that's yeah. It. And that's where I have to look at my shit too, and just be like, I'm not a DP, mm -hmm. you know. And I can accept that. I can keep learning more, but then am I catching up with the newest tech, with the newest accessories, and all that shit? Not really. You know, like I just need to know what I need, the resolution I need, and whatever. Thank God for art school. <laughs> like, yeah. Honestly, like. Through the school, like if you have one camera, you kind of know every camera, how it works, mm -hmm. like the way they taught me through. So at least that. But so what I'm seeing is people just picking up the cheapest red they can through all this investment and credit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they put themselves in a hole and they don't exactly know how to work. Dude, there, there was this one kid. This dude sucked so bad. And I'm going to say his name because yeah. I did not like this kid okay. at all. This kid was named is Do you remember this kid? Oh! Do you I can't remember? Believe you're, okay. Do you remember this track? Yes. Bag? So this little kid, he's also a little. His father's also a pastor. Okay. He's a, he's a, like one of those little Christian kids. This little fuck man is such a fucking trash bag. He number one, he he just he was one of those kids that talked so much shit about how dope he was. Yeah. And how much he knew. And how everyone else sucked. How every and his work was the worst. It was like the worst, like beginning intro to film making bullshit you've ever yeah. seen. And by the way, when he bought his red at the time, which was the red, I think he got, it was a red one. Yeah. No, it was a red Scarlet. It was Scarlet. the one that Dan got. Yeah. This kid maybe shot one or two videos and his dad bought him a red Scarlet and he was walking around like, yo, I could, he wanted to be the next big like movie. Exactly. Yeah. Movie, movie all DP. That shit. It was the most unhumble piece of shit I've ever met in my life. And his work fucking sucked. This kid, I met him through that uh, uh, Water for Life uh, fundraising concert we had at oh, Avalon. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we, and Tony Hunt, all that shit, we like put, like put some work in through. I was doing the big video screen, all that. Dan was doing all the production, all the, putting all this work into it. And then after it was done, I see this kid in the green room and backstage. I, I don't know how he got there or whatever. Um, I just say, what's up? And he says, what's up? And that's that's the first time and last time I've ever met him. That was fucking 2012, mm -hmm. dude. And then he adds me on Facebook. So it's like, mm, all right, I met you, right? And And then like, just like you said, this guy would talk so much shit about like, even shit like Interstellar doesn't deserve any of its Oscars or any of that shit. Like he talks so much shit about great artists with nothing to show for it. 
right? But when I would say something like how I didn't enjoy Breaking Bad, mm -hmm. right? Did you watch Breaking Bad? Yes, I enjoyed Breaking Bad the first two or three seasons. Right. Over time, I didn't. Because mm -hmm. it, it hit close to home. Yeah. <laughs> My dad being the one, I sorely related to the fucking kid yeah. with the crutches because of how he sees his dad in that relationship, right? Mm -hmm. I just didn't like the way how this motherfucker, Walter White, didn't see any consequences, didn't get caught, all this shit or whatever, right? And the kind of shit I saw in my life and the way they glorified meth in the show. I didn't like that, you know? And I just made mention of it. And this fucking motherfucker just gave me so much shit for being a hack. A hack? Yeah. How are you a hack? He's done nothing. I don't know, man. And he would just talk shit. And honestly, I didn't reply because I was like, I don't even know this motherfucker, this guy. Mm -hmm. But it's been in the back of my head and I never said anything. And then you brought him up. <laughs> it's so funny. You, fucking brought you him know up. what the funny thing is, is like he would never say that to somebody in person. He's literally this, this pale face, emaciated little fuck. <sighs> literally the tiniest pale face, emaciated, emaciated little dweeby ass fuck. That has the smallest voice, but when he goes online, he talks a lot he talks of shit. So much shit. He talks so much shit about people. It's unfucking real, and he has nothing to show for it. You could say whatever you want if your work is great, and no matter he maybe he got better. I don't fucking know. The weird, hey man, I'm still I like I don't see anything. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't see nothing. Yeah, because he was supposed to be the next biggest director. Is how yeah. he would talk about himself. This little fucking nineteen year old fuck at the time. Yeah. I mean, like, and he cycled through, like, the YouTube scene and just... Nobody used him ever again. Yeah, people just got tired of his bullshit, mm -hmm. you know? And I think, I don't know if he needs some time to look through it, but, like, even Kenson was like, hey, do you want to go have dinner with him? I said, fuck no. Why is Kenson hanging out with him? Because he was like, hey, man, he's a changed guy and this and that. And for me, I was like, come on, man, I'm Korean. Like, fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, my this resentment... Is my resentment, it was few years back i was like my resentments rides high i'm not gonna see that motherfucker well i mean the best way for that kid to make amends with people is for him to apologize because the way that he was carrying himself and the type of shit that he would talk to and he would talk about it to my personal talk about my personal friends it just because he wanted to be a part of something so he would hop on a bad wagon and talk shit is how that kid was he is the clear example of everything that is wrong with the with uh, the social media generation yeah right all talk online when you come up to this kid's face he crumbles he's quiet he doesn't I say shit. I haven't seen any of his work. Because he's not good. Yeah. And that's the thing too. And then he could sit there and critique what other people do when he has nothing to show for his own personal work. He also was the kid where his mommy and daddy bought him everything. Mm. His, they bought him a 20000 fucking dollar camera before he could even show what he was worth. He didn't even know how to use the camera. Yeah. On top of that, he wanted to be a director. Hey, he sold it later too. Just a few years later. Of I, course. I've seen that post. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it was just the weird thing of how this guy wouldn't leave me alone. Like, and yeah. I had a DM him like, bro, I don't fucking know you. Cause like, I even had to say, like, I said it out loud to in a post, just being like the Korean church. Um, they don't treat black people very well either. Yeah. And I let that be known, you know, because they're crying for freedom and liberation for North Korea every fucking day, mm -hmm. you know, but the Korean church doesn't cry for freedom and liberation for the people in our own country. Yeah. And then this guy started talking about my grammar and <laughs> my spelling, my post, you know? This guy's a loser. Yeah. And I just had to go in and just be like, hey, man, I've, I met you once. I've never actually hung out with you or anything. Legit, I hardly know you. You could walk up to him and choke him out with one yeah, hand. And That's I, how feeble this human being is. I had to tell him, if I ever see you, like in person to person, we're going to have a fucking problem. Yeah. Like, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. either unfriend me i don't give a fuck or just leave me and don't and don't talk to me yeah <laughs> like and what do you say blank of course like because it got real yeah or and then it was like a few months ago actually mm -hmm. a few months ago he dm me it was a legit apology <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that he had grown up he was an asshole and he hopes we can friend but the thing is, too, at the same time, it's like, I still haven't met you. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know you, dude. And I really don't care if we are. Like, I'm thankful that you're apologetic is the point of it. I didn't really reply because I was like, I still don't know you. 
Yeah, it's like, I, I, I just don't talk to me. Yeah, it's just, I would rather, if I don't even talk to you ever, then nothing ever this happens This kid was either. so odd. Yeah. He was so odd. He was too old for that shit too at the time. This podcast is brought to you by Junbi Matcha. Do you hate the jitters and crash that coffee gives you? Well, say no more, my friends, because hundreds of thousands of people are drinking Junbi Matcha, not only for the health benefits, but for the caffeine boost that lasts without the crash of coffee. You can mix it, have it hot, ice cold, or try it with your favorite juices and have fun with it. Remember, not all matcha is created the same, and Junbi has the highest quality matcha you can find straight from a farm in Japan, handpicked and curated to get you the best quality there is. No competition. To get 10% off your first order of tins and packets, go to junbishop.com. That's J-U-N-B-I shop.com and enter code GeniusBrain to get 10% off your first order. That's J-U-N-B-I shop.com. Code genius brain he was not good at what he did he was terrible yeah. and that's what the person who he was anyways it seems like he got a lot better but i don't i don't really care for him dude i i meet people like that where they know they're in deep shit but then they'll go ahead right and like let's say two mutual people who are working together a company i know and a person i know and this one person who was on the verge of getting fired came up to me and told me, oh, do you know this person that works at that company? Oh, they're such a piece of shit. They do this and and all this bullshit. And then she's like, yeah, I'm leaving. I'm thinking of leaving the company. And then on the other side of the this, you know, <laughs> the story, you hear, oh, they were terrible. This person was a terrible employee. Yeah, and they're just creating drama and talking shit about everyone that was unnecessary, you know, and didn't get the work done because of it. Dude, you know? let me tell you this fucking funny ass story. So I, I, I know somebody who owns a business, right? And one of the, the hardest part about the hiring process when you own a small business, right? I'm not a part of the hiring process in our own small businesses, mm -hmm. but this person was telling me because she deals with the employees that uh, the generation that she's employing now are very entitled in the most, oh. in the most ridiculous way possible, yeah. right? And by the way, this lady is not, the, my, my, my friend who owns it, she's not old, mm -hmm. right? She's low 30s. Mm -hmm. So she's not that far off from like somebody who's like 25, 26, 24. Yeah. And so- one of the employees came in and she goes, this is what I have to deal with. This employee came in and said, hey, uh, oh, this, this, this employee came in an hour late to work, uh -huh. right? And they're wondering what the hell happened because they ha she now has to ask another employee to cover for the hour until she comes in because she needs the help because that's what they set the schedule up with. They don't have that many employees there. So she comes in and she goes, hey, you're an hour late today. She goes, yeah, I just... I was feeling sad today. <laughs> I'm, excuse me? She goes, uh, and you know, she's not, by the way, she could, she's very calm, doesn't yell at it. She goes, okay, well, you know that even, I understand that you're sad. Yeah. And we all have feelings. You still have to come to work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the fact that she had to tell her that just because you're sad, you still have to come to work. Or she told that you have to let us know what's going on. Now we had to ask X person to stay behind to cover your shift and they have somewhere to go. Do you think that's fair? And then she's looking at her like she's crazy. Like, what are you talking about? Like, Dude. you guys don't care about mental health. It's no, no, oh no, no. Oh my no. God. It's, you haven't, how frustrating is that? Yeah. You don't care about mental health? No, it's fine. You had to let us know. Yeah. That something is going on in your personal life and that you might show up an hour late and you didn't do that. So this girl <laughs> continues with this behavior and then she has to be let go because she just decides to come whenever she wants. Yeah. So she goes out of her way, goes on her, on their Yelp and right, gives them a one-star review talking about how it's an abusive uh, uh, abusive um, workplace, <sighs> a toxic workplace. Oh and so they had to go on Yelp and say, well, this is, and they had to show time cards. This, this employee showed up multiple times late and- we let her go because of her punctuality issues. So this is a disgruntled point. So they, they took the review down. But that's somebody who doesn't understand personal responsibility. Yeah, I mean, the entitlement goes a long ways through. I don't know if it's a specific American thing, but God damn it, I fucking see it so much here where they're entitled to everything. They own everything and everything should go towards them. People are entitled to, to basic human rights. 
you're not entitled for all these things. People think that their bonuses are their basic rights. <laughs> that's that's the crazy thing. Why right? is it called a bonus then? Yeah, I know. <laughs> no. Like they think that they're entitled to praise for everything that they do. Yeah. And it's completely fucking obnoxious. And that's why they get hurt so much. They expect the world to always pat them on the back. And it's not true. This is not a younger generation. This is even our generation. It's yeah. like this too. They they don't like criticism, just like that girl in, in who who received the criticism for the video. Yeah, she expect she asked you expecting you to say that she was amazing, and because <laughs> you didn't do it, now it's your fault that she quit. Yeah, not because she's weak, not because she's not good at her craft, not because she didn't want to put the time and dedicate herself to something. What because it's hard, it's difficult. Growth is difficult. You never grow from things being easy. You grow from fucking adversity. From failing. Yes. You have to fail to know what's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think people just are repelled by failure and don't want to see it kind of thing. They want to see like, uh, they want to see quick results. I mean, the same with like, I mean, weight loss comes to mind too, where they think they're going to have a six pack in two weeks or some shit. Yeah. Or the next day. You know? And it's it's okay to share these flaws too. That's why I'm okay saying that I saw an old lady fall on the floor and I shadow box in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can say what's wrong with you yeah. because you own it. Who the fuck is going to say that against you? You know it's part of you. Yeah, I, I know. know. You don't need to tell me. I know. Yeah, I know. You know? you know? And this is just a part of the process of growth, man. It's, it's, it's hard to... That's why I like people who can laugh at themselves mm. because it shows that somebody's willing to understand that they have flaws and mistakes. Laughing at, at yourself is one of the most soul satisfying things ever because it takes power away from other people who feel like they could ridicule you. Right. And it also shows you that you understand where you fucked up and you can move on. And now like these younger generation is trying to say self-deprecation isn't funny. You know, like I've Who's seen saying that? Session, Fuck you. you know, like it's toxic towards this and that. It's like, come on, laughing at self deprecation Hating yourself through self-deprecation is terrible. Yeah. yeah. Laugh laughing at your self-deprecation. You know You're what's not bullying yourself. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what's toxic? You being a little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's toxic, you little bitch. It's like how fucking dare you? Yeah. Self-deprecating is the best, man. It it makes me feel good because it allows me to laugh at things that aren't important. It's a sign of intelligence because you are aware exactly <laughs> what you're doing wrong. You know, or what you did wrong mm -hmm. and what then those type of people can assess how they can be better in the future. Yeah. And it's it's just and I think self-deprecation works on stuff that just doesn't matter. It's stupid stuff that shouldn't bother people. Mm. Right. So for I mean, just watching an old lady fall in shadow box, it was pretty bad. But <laughs> <laughs> that, that's pretty bad. But I have to make fun of myself because in that situation, I'm also kind of making fun of myself about how much I had to second guess myself. Yes. And the next thing you know, 30 minutes later, I'm like, I should help her. And she's gone. <laughs> she, she probably went to the hospital. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? I mean, to, to speak on your failures, to see what you missed, mm -hmm. right? And to see the humor out of it is, let's say it's a coping mechanism mechanism right it's better than hating yourself oh a hundred percent yeah to say you fucked up i should have done this i should have uh whatever mm -hmm. no nah, next time you know you'll do better <laughs> you won't fuck up you won't have another story yeah you know like i already have two stories of trying to punch people in the face fucking up you know and even though i saw one of them <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i'm telling you guys i fucked up because i was a fucking idiot right and it's real shit and obviously why am i saying it out loud I'm different now. Yeah. I would never do that now. Yeah. I'm fucking 35 now. Yeah. You know, it's way beyond that. Yeah. I wonder why, wait, why is that? There are so many weird trends now where they feel like everything we did in the past is toxic and it's not true. I think what's toxic is people subscribing to the fact that being weak about everything is okay. It's close to trying to be holy perfect. That's why I keep saying wokeness is a theology because mm. they're striving for a holiness, this thing set apart from what society is today. That's right? a standard that you can never live up to because the biggest difference between the people that you are damning is the fact that their information is public and yours is not. And that's your saving grace because right. I went to dig into your fucking closet. I'll see so many skeletons. It's unreal. Yeah. Everyone has shit that they're not going to say. Yeah. And right. I'll tell you this too. I'm actually okay with people saying fucked up shit in their small circles. As long as they don't teach their kids that, as long right. as they don't spread it to other people. Right. Right. You can have your own little fucked up jokes and your sense of humor. 
just don't bring it to anybody else and don't yeah. teach it to somebody You're not going to like put it in public, say it out loud in Safeway or some shit. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and that's your right. You're allowed to say that. I think that's yeah. where the freedom of speech thing. Maybe they, people got lost. Maybe the world, they lost the, the fact that the world is not an open mic. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is, man. Yeah. They think the world media. is open. Yeah. You Twitter. can say anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Twitter is an open mic, isn't it? Yeah. And they think the world is an open mic now. And they can say whatever the fuck they want without any consequences. And when they get socked in the mouth for it, they get surprised. They go, why did you do that? Yeah, you impede on my rights. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? And then you get arrested at fucking uh, Nordstrom Rack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying to cite uh, the, the CDC, you fucking weirdo. Well, fuck. Well, we forgot to talk about Tenet again. Again, that and is the second time. <laughs> You know what? This is what happens when you have two guys with ADD yeah. doing a podcast. <laughs> we said, we literally said, all right, we're talking about Tenet, right? And then we took a water break. All right, let's talk about Tenet. You brought up Tenet earlier, too. And then we still went off fucking rails, dude. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. We'll, get, we'll there. get there eventually, guys. Either way, this podcast was great. Uh, you guys can catch Ed at Ed Park uh, VP and check his podcast at uh, Bible Study at Momo. Yeah, you can check them and you can see every Genius Brain every Thursdays and Sundays right in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube about what you think about these topics. Write down topics that you want to hear and then we'll see you all next time, my fucking uh, brain farts. Brain farts. That's Bra what you guys are, our subscribers. Brain farts, baby. <laughs> see you all next time. Peace.